coming at you from the Hey Yo Studios. It's the Fade Route with DNZ. Here are your hosts, D and Z. Coming at you live from the AO studio. AO. It's the Fade Route with D and Z. I am D, and we've got a great show for you tonight. Clay Bellinger is still looking for a job. The Eagles lose three straight. And it's time for Festivus and the airing of grievances. But we begin today's show with Z, you're not going to believe this. But the Buffalo Bills finally figured out how to run the ball in the National Football League without their quarterback. Wow. The Bills thumped the Cowboys 31-10. Josh Allen had under 100 yards passing. And James Cook, Dalvin's little brother, had 178 yards on the ground. In the bill, the bill. If the Bills find balance on offense, is there a team in the National Football League that can beat the Buffalo Bills? With more performances like that one on Sunday, Dalvin is going to be James Cook's older brother. Let's put it that way. Like he torched the Dallas Cowboys defense, and the Cowboys are starting to look a little fraudish, as if, especially if they have to be on the road. Yeah, that's you know they you go to Jerry World, you enter at your own peril, but the Cowboys can't seem to get the mix right when they leave the comforts of home. But credit to the Buffalo Bills, two weeks in a row, right? They're on a two-game heater. They knocked off the Chiefs. Kadarius Tony play Kadarius Kadarius Tony play aside. They they knocked off the Chiefs. A win is a win. You take it. You move on. And then they went into this game knowing that they need to make a statement. And they did so. And they bumped a Dallas defense that, at this point, is living on reputation. Right? You have... Well, I think they still lead the league in a couple of categories. I mean, here's the deal. It's like... You know, this is Dan Quinn's defense. We saw what they did a couple of weeks ago when they faced the Seahawks and they gave up 35 points to them too. There are holes in the defense. There are clear-cut ways to beat it. And God help you if you get behind against the Dallas Cowboys because their front four and Micah Parsons are coming after the quarterback. So they're willing to get gashed, you know, by the run game. And they're willing to big up, give up big yards to running backs. But, I mean, they can be formidable, like you said, in Jerry's world. And that's what it's all going to come down to, right? Now, Dallas, Dallas has a pretty tough schedule remaining. While Philadelphia has cakewalks, right? They've got the Giants twice. And I want to say the Cardinals. You are correct, sir. And then Dallas, they have Miami this week. I think they have one, and then I think one Kip cupcake game, and then I think they finish with a tough game. I want to say it's something like that. Yeah, they play the Dolphins this weekend, the Lions next weekend, and then they finish with the Commies. So we must assume that the Eagles are going to win out. If the Eagles win out, they get the division which means Dallas will have to be going on the road to play some games. And that doesn't bode well for Dallas. It doesn't bode well for them at all. And you you have to also give credit to Buffalo on defense as well, right? Dak Prescott, 21-34, 134, no touchdowns, one pick. Held Tony Pollard to 52 yards. Mm -hmm. Not Not much to be said. On the Dallas offense, right? Seven catches for 53 from C.D. Lamb. And Nobody got in the end zone. He got a tutty. Yeah. C.D. got a tutty. So, so. But here's the deal. It's like, see, we've talked about this before, right? The week before, they played the Eagles in a division game. Very important for their schedule. Very important for what they're trying to do. They thumped the Eagles 33-13, right? So all week long... Like, you're, you're focused on this division game. It's a must-win game for you. And then you have to travel to, what, Western New York 
in December. Mm-hmm. Could it be easy that it was just hard for them to get up for this game after just playing the Eagles and, and smashing the Eagles? If that's the case, then you're screwed moving forward. Like, if you have aspirations to bigger and better things, you can't afford to have these kinds of games. It's not a trap game, right? Because Buffalo is not... It's not like they went and lost to the Panthers. Uh-huh. Like, but the Buffalo Bills are a formidable team. Like, uh, uh, notwithstanding what has happened this year, mm-hmm. like, they, they're still... They're still a representative organization. They're going to make the playoffs. At this rate. At this rate. At this rate they are. But last week we weren't too sure about the Billies. Yeah, well. <laughs> look at the. Look at My the how the tables have turned. But he, they're, in, they're in a quagmire of very similar teams. Yeah. Right? You have the Bengals without Joe Burrow. You have the Browns with Joe Flacco. You have the Steelers who are starting Mason fucking Rudolph. Mm-hmm. Right? You have the Texans who are going to go with Case Keenan because CJ Stroud is concussed. You have the Colts with Gardner Minshew. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I just rattled off all those guys. Josh Allen's still better than all. Yeah, but this is so, also a Bills team that's lost to COVID. They've lost to the Jets, right? They've so lost. the Eagles. What's your point? <laughs> They've lost to the Patriots. You know, they barely squeaked by the Buccaneers. They lost to the Broncos. You know, they're they're a team that's been the up Broncos and down. The Broncos are in it too. The Broncos are in that uh, my, quagmire of mediocrity too. And like you said, they 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 were a Kadarius Tony away from losing to the Chiefs. You know, um, what I will say about Buffalo, and I think I could say this more more about Buffalo than I can about Dallas. I feel the Buffalo Bills have played a tougher schedule this year. And I think they're better prepared for the playoffs than Dallas is. I don't know if you agree agree with that. that You agree with that? Yeah, Yeah, because, I mean, they played the Eagles, who they lost to by three in overtime. Like, they've they've played the Chiefs. They've played a good Broncos team. Not the first half Broncos team. The second half Broncos team is beating people. They they played the Dolphins at home and bludgeoned them, right? And they're going to finish the season against the Dolphins. You know, I think they're a tested team. Um, they played. They played everybody. They played. They played them very tough. You know, I can't recall off the top of my head a game where Buffalo got blown out. They lost some close games, but they haven't been blown out. They haven't been beaten to death. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think that says a lot about them. Um, and as far as Dallas is concerned, I mean. They're just not, I mean, the the NFC in general, right? It's like, I can't really hang my hat on anybody. Yeah, the 49ers are world beaters, but I've also seen them, what, like, and they, like, lose, they lost to Cleveland, in Cleveland. They lost three in a row. Yeah, so, and and we're going to find out about, we're going to find out about the 49ers this, you know, Monday, because they're facing a Ravens team that's actually pretty pissed off because they're going into the game as five-point underdogs. Um, and this is, I, I want to, let me see if I can get this right. I believe it's so like. while you're doing that, the largest margin of defeat for the Buffalo Bills this season has been six points. Yeah. That's stellar, man. And we talk shit about them. I, I do. I do. Cause I don't believe, I didn't believe in their philosophy with Ken Dorsey. I'm more with Brady on his, on at least in the last games. Like, listen, run the football. Doubt um Cook is a very good runner. James Cook, you drafted him. You give him the football. We all that's talk- the thing. Like you put you, you just hit the nail on the head. Yeah. This is not Brian Dayball system. This is not right. Ken Dorsey system. This right. is now a balanced attack where you're gonna run first and then you're going to allow Josh Allen. You gotta to run do in the cold does. you gotta run in the cold yes. weather. You gotta run the cold weather. And I and listen, I think that they're they're a, a much more difficult team to defend when I have to worry about all of your weapons. Like, they have two tight ends that are good. Knox and Kincaid are both good. Mm-hmm. But Cook is good. Murray is a good short, short run back. You have Diggs. You've got um, 
what's the uh, uh Gabe Davis? Man, they're they're they've got talent. You they now have that guy Shakir. Shakir's yeah. looking great too. Now the, the remaining three schedule the remaining three games for the Bills against the Staleyless Chargers, who are gonna rely on Easton Stick, Mr. Mr. Stick, the guy who do- all he knows is winning. You have the Patriots on New Year's Eve, and then the last game is against the Dolphins, who may have the division sewn up and may not play for anything. So it's it is possible that they can run the table here. If they run the table, that brings you, you know, that brings you to eleven and six. Eleven and six is is playoffs. That's right there, man. It's actually, yeah. It's actually and the other right thing, there. and I, I I don't I don't know if this plays into anything, but. I mean, seven teams make the playoffs this year. Mm-hmm. And if you're Dallas, you know, you need to win that Eagles game because it's a division game and you need the head to head. And, you know, it's an NFC opponent and yada, 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 yada. And if you're Dallas, you've got to think you're going to be in the playoffs. Like, there's no way there are 17, you know, you're going to be one of the seven. Oh, and no I, think, I think it changed, I just think it changes the mindset of some people. You know, now that seven teams get in instead of six. I do. I do. I, I mean, I'm not saying they took a back seat and we're going to let Buffalo win. But it's much more important to win the next three games, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and if we're going to go up to – we have to go to Buffalo. I mean, we're the Dallas Cowboys and we've got to go to Buffalo in, in, in December. I mean, we've already – we're already a dog because of that. So – I'm not saying they took a backseat. I'm just, I'm saying, you know, sometimes I think you look at the schedule, especially now when seven teams make the playoffs and you're like, all right, um, we're going to do our best. But if we fall short, we'll we'll bounce back by winning our next three. That's the only thing I can think of. But, Completely. But right now, if you're, the way you're looking at things, yeah, it is very difficult for me to think that like, it was more important for Buffalo to win that game, right? Buffalo had to win that game. They had no choice. If they, if Buffalo lost last weekend or on Monday or Sunday night or whenever it was, they're out of the playoffs. They're not making it. Where, where Dallas, they could afford to lose that game just because of the situation they're in and just because of who they were playing. Well, we'd be talking about the Bills the way we were talking about the Broncos, and the Broncos didn't exactly do themselves any favors either in their loss so yeah, that was an odd game. you know but you're looking at like it, it's a tough situation right because you're looking at they're either gonna get the two or they're gonna get the five right if they get the two they draw the rams at home that's not an easy game but for that's dallas not- yeah but for dallas you're you're 17 points better than everybody you play at home you are, but at the same time... What's the alternate? What's the alternate if you're the five? You're going to have to play the Bucks, right? You play the Please. Bucks in okay. Tampa. Okay, Z, so come on. Who would you who would you, who would would you? you rather play? I don't want to play. I don't want to play the Bucks in Tampa. Bucks are on play, fire right I don't now. want to play either team. I'd rather play the Rams. I'm not afraid of the Rams. I'm not afraid of the Rams at home. I'm not afraid of the Rams at home. Now, if I had to go to L.A., that could be a tighter game. But the Bucks are playing, man. Baker Mayfield may be comeback player of the year. He's having a hell of a season. But no, ba- Baker is absolutely having a hell but, of a game. But stay, staying yeah. in the NFC East, the Eagles, huh, they lost their third straight on Monday night, falling late to the Seahawks 2017. My boy Drew Locke, fucking love that guy. After the game, Hertz said there are people in the locker room that need to be more committed to winning and the football team. Whoa. That's loaded. Z, who are those comments aimed towards? Well, <laughs> it's hard to say, <laughs> right? That's that's some spice right there. <laughs> that's a- absolutely some spice. And it's awfully spicy from a guy who's 17 of 31 for 143 yards and two picks. And I believe yeah. he But he did have two rushing yards. I wanna say he touchdowns. leads I wanna say he leads the league in turnovers. Or he's yeah. pretty close. 17 turnovers, I believe he has. Like, over the, Mr. QBR, 56.6. You, you, throw, you know, glass houses and all that. But you got to think. I mean, I'm looking at it. For one, James Bradbury. 
Drew Locke was looking for him. <laughs> Drew, it, it was like Tom Brady, Anthony Brown. Ooh. There's my bitch. There's Ooh. my bitch. And it was like, boom, 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 boom. Every time he saw James Bradbury, that ball was out of just his to, hand. J- just to give the quotes, I don't think we are committed enough. Uh, I don't think we are committed enough. Been talking about execution all year, getting on the same page, everyone being on the same page. We didn't execute. I don't think we're all committed enough. You know, just got to turn it around. You know, it's a challenge that we have to embrace. Just continue to see it through. Yeah. That sounds like yeah, I'm, if I'm sitting next to him in my locker, getting dressed after the game, and I hear that, I'm, I'm just gonna take my clothes and get dressed somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who are you calling out? Are you calling out Fletcher Cox with one tackle? That one tackle was a sack. Who? Jalen Carter, Brandon Graham. Like, who are you calling out? Again. Again, similar to what we then this is bad because they lost three straight. And they came out on fire, right? They came out and scored a touchdown right away. And you're like, oh, this shit's over. Okay. Eagles are back. I mean, he took a set if I if I remember correctly, he was sick all week. He was downgraded to questionable. He didn't fly to Seattle with the team. I believe he flew there Sunday night or Monday early because he yeah. was so sick. But if I'm watching him, Z, he doesn't look right. He looks hurt to me. He's running slow. Um, some of his passes are aired on the our caution. They're they're um he's fumbling the ball a lot. Um, so are you suggesting that he's not calling out play individual players per se? You think he's calling out whoever is running this team offensively? And are you think he's call, talking out uh, about Mr. Sirianni? Maybe Frankly, about the fact that he's not, uh, you know, he's he's not a good head football coach. And he brought in, he said, Sean Desai, you can go. We got Matt Patricia. He's going to be running the defense. Because he knows so much. He's so yes. good. Uh, honestly, Sounds like a panic move to me. Honestly, I think he, I think he's actually calling out A.J. Brown. Because mm. I don't think they have seen eye to eye in a lot of things. And I I think part of the problems with the offense is, you know, he feels like he has to force it to him. He has to force it to A.J. Brown. He's got to keep him happy. And I think there needs to be more sharing of the football. I mean, Swift looked great on Monday night. I think he should have got the ball more. And he's not even on my fantasy team, and I'm saying that. <laughs> um, and defensively, I don't know where they are at. I mean, Hassan Reddick uh, was, was amazing last year. Like, where is he at this year? And you said Fletcher Cox. Yeah. One one sack, dude? What's going on? Like, their defense was so elite. And your boy, James Bradbury, like, what's up, man? Like, what's going on? So, they have, I mean, they have the Giants two out of the next three weeks. And, I mean, I would expect them to dominate them at home and show them who's boss. I mean, if this game this weekend against the Giants is close then I'm going to have to start writing off the Eagles because at some point you're going to have to face San Francisco, who, who I believe thumped you already. So, you know, I don't, I don't have faith that you can go to Dallas and beat Dallas. I mean, if you lose, if you lose one of these games, these next three games, you're opening the door for Dallas to win the division and for you to ultimately either have to go to Dallas or have to go to San Francisco to win a football game. And it's not going to happen. If you survive Tampa Bay, because you're right. going to draw Tampa Bay in the first round. Right. Yeah. And I don't know if they'll survive Tampa Bay. I really, I think Baker Mayfield is playing very well. Uh, Rashad White, who is on my fantasy team, has had a great second half after the bye. They realize get him the ball in space. Well, we can run him. He can run through the uh, um, in between the tackles and off tackle. The only person that's kind of suffered in this is Chris Godwin. He doesn't get he doesn't get much love anymore. But I believe Mike Evans is second in the league in receiving touchdowns. Um, they need to get the tight end involved in, involved more. But you know, and and I do. I mean, their defense has got exploited at times this year. But I do like their defense. I believe in Todd Bowles' defense more than I believe in Robert Sala's defense, and more than Robert Sala's head coach. But you know, I I think I think they're gonna be okay. I think I think the Buccaneers are gonna be all right. As a defensive coordinator, Todd Bowles knows more about defense than Robert Sala. 
Like, and it's my next door neighbor, who is a soccer fan, knows more defense about more about <laughs> NFL defense than Robert Sala does. Yeah. Let's just put it Todd, that way. Todd Bowles knows what he's doing. If you're, if yeah. you're asking, if yeah. you're asking me who I'm going to favor in that matchup, Todd Bowles is definitely going to be on that list. I mean, I can see what you're saying about the forcing AJ Brown the ball. He was targeted ten times. He had five catches. Eesh, so, that's not good. Yeah, that's so not good. That's, that's, that's definitely something to be concerned about. Quez Watkins zero for zero. He had a, what we like to call a Terry McLaurin game. He got <laughs> Terry, cardio. I'm working on my cardio, man. <laughs> yeah, but at least at least that's McLaurin, a great comment. That's man. a fantastic one. <laughs> you know, you definitely need to. Jalen Hurts needs to get right through the air because mm-hmm. on the ground, like he's more than representative. 82 yards and two touchdowns. But this is exactly what we've been talking about. We're referencing Buffalo, right? This is exactly what we were talking about with Buffalo. If your quarterback is your leading rusher, you got a problem. Right. Right. So right. this is yeah. the same principle, right. except right. now it's in Philly instead of in Buffalo. Yeah. So that's regression. That is absolute regression by the Eagles offense. And that is that needs to be dealt with immediately. And if Jalen Hurts is hurt, what, what is the point? What's the point of him being out there? I do think and, he's hurt. And another thing to just go a little bit further. If he's hurt, how do you think he got hurt? Yeah. And all those fucking tush pushes. <laughs> yeah. It's but, it's not a very healthy way to make a living. I'll no, tell it's you not, that. It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable at all. Eventually, it stands to reason that some fat guy is going to land on you and, <laughs> and fuck you up. Like that, that's why they're big, beefy boys pounding meat in that goddamn in that pile. <laughs> I mean, I understand that Jalen Hurts can squat 600 pounds, but you're still getting pounded on, man. And those hits add up. And to me, that's a failure on coaching. Just because it works all almost all the time doesn't mean you should do it all the you're, you're, time. Your buddy Sirianni there, you love that guy. Just because it works doesn't mean you need to do it all the time. There's a but to be to- fair, they were, I mean, to be fair... The Eagles did have to fly to Seattle. Seattle has their back against the wall, similar to the way Buffalo did. And really, they were a play away from probably being up more. But there was a false start from Jason Kelsey on a tush push. Which is another thing that we need to discuss because now that offensive line of the Eagles is being called for penalties. They have not been called for penalties up until recently. Lane Johnson is finally being called for for, uh, false starts. Jason Kelsey, as a center, he's wiggling the ball forward. That's an illegal snap. Yeah, and he said he's been warned about that before. And it was a mistake by him, and he takes full responsibility, which I give him a lot of credit for. And, and I wonder if I wonder if Jalen Hurts is also referencing him because he's got his podcast, he's got all the things mm-hmm. going on with Travis. Could be. I, I wonder if he's uh, kind of being passive aggressive about that either. But you know, that just a passive aggressive comment like that yeah. is not. It, it's not the best in terms of locker room. Yeah, Charming. and he's very cool and calm and collective about things. He he seems to be a guy that never gets too high, never gets too low. Kind of plays the game with an even shelf. So it was surprising to hear him say that. Can you take the championship from DNZ this year? You can play our football pick'em on CBS Sports and compete against us in the option every week. Check the link in our Instagram bio, Fade Round Podcast, for all the details and to sign up. Then tune into the fade route every week until the Super Bowl for updates and standing. Bring it on. Moving from the gridiron to the hardwood. You know, Z, we've been talking a lot about the NFL MVP. We still can't figure that one out. <laughs> but we have not discussed who has been the MVP of the NBA season so far. So, you know, what are the characteristics necessary to be the MVP in the NBA? And who's been the MVP so far this year for you? Well, for this year, they're actually adding in durability, right? Because there are certain yeah, you have to, you have to meet certain. Well, you if you look at these things, like you have guys that are barely 
qualifying right now. <laughs> They're barely qualifying for a postseason award. So it's one of those things that, yeah, like, oh, you could be having a fantastic year, but hey, you just didn't play enough. And you know what? There's something to be said for that because Major League Baseball, you have to play a certain number of games to qualify for award. Because, you know, you can hit... Well, look what happened to Gary Sanchez. He didn't qualify because he didn't play enough games. He was, he, arguably, he had better numbers than the rookie of the year from that rookie of the year season, that rookie season. Arguably, he had better numbers. He didn't play enough games. So the idea is that the sample size will eventually kind of even itself out. But I'm looking for durability. I'm looking for dominance. And I'm looking for success. Mm-hmm. Like, th- those are my three criteria. So that leaves you with... Embiid, that leaves you with Jokic, that leaves you with Giannis, that leaves you with Luka, like, you're really, I mean, a lot of the usual suspects. I want to throw, I want to throw something at you. I want to throw something at you. I want to hear this, because I wonder if it's the same guy that I'm going to say. Oh, no, go ahead. No, no, I want to hear what you got. I want to hear you Shaquille just Alexander. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Absolutely. To me, to me, he is the MVP right now. Now, uh, I wrote down a couple of different things for criteria. So one of the things I, I feel like is you got to be a team leader. Yeah. You got to be the leader of your team. Like they're not going to give a second fiddle guy like Chet Holmgren the MVP. You know what I mean? Get, they're not going to give, year, they're not going to give, in my opinion, they wouldn't give Devin Booker the MVP with Kevin Durant on his team. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to give Anthony Davis the MVP with LeBron James on the team. You got to be the man. You got to be the leader, right? That's number one. Number two, I think you got to be a top 10 player. Like, they're not going to give somebody outside the top 10 the MVP. So that means, like, like a De'Aaron Fox. I don't think he could get the MVP. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think it, it, this sounds weird. This might sound weird, but I don't think like a Dame Lillard could get the MVP. I don't think a Jalen Brunson could get the MVP because they're not really a top 10 player. Right. And then the other thing is I think your team needs to finish in the top three. I think if your team is a four or five or six seed, I don't think you got a chance. But yeah, I'm with. I mean, if you look at shot, if you look at SGA's numbers, hot damn, hot damn, and he he's the guy. Like when you're when they're when they need a bucket, he's the guy. He's averaging 30 points a game right now, and good lord, if the Clippers kept him instead of trading him for for I guess. Who, uh, who they trade Paul George no? for Paul George? Could you imagine Kawhi and SGA? Like wow, and and of course, like to me, I would take his odds. I think he's, I think he's like, I want to say he's a hundred or two hundred to one, something crazy like that. Mm. But you got your usuals, right? I would say no, no. You know what? He's he's probably more than that. He might be plus. He might be a plus a thousand or plus eight hundred because. Tatum is plus is 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 eighteen to one, and I like Tatum. I mean, he's having a very good season. I believe Boston is still undefeated at home. Um, Giannis, the usual, right? Joel Embiid, you can't go wrong with Joel. Um, Jokic, just because of his all around game, because he's doing more than just scoring. Like he's a he's he's an assist monster, things like that. You know, but yeah. What would you say about a guy like Tyrese Halliburton on the Pacers? Yeah, I'm not I'm not opposed to him, but the problem is is like he's he's his team is not his top six team, right? No. He's not on a he's not, I mean his team's not a top three team. Is that his team's not even close to being a top three team. So that's and he's the man, but they're more of a team. They're more of a team. I see them as being more of a team dynamic. I mean, I know he wants the ball in crunch time, but does he always get the ball in crunch time? I don't know. I don't watch enough enough of their games, probably. Well, I mean, he's the guy. Like, he, offensively, he's definitely the guy. Like, Obi Toppin is there. I mean, you have guys like Bruce Brown, Buddy Heald. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's the guy. He's the yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. Guy. Oscar Sheepway. 
yeah, yeah, Miles Turner. No, 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 he's the guy. He's sticking with sticking with the NBA talk. I mean, who, who who's going to trade for Donovan Mitchell? Is that going to happen? <laughs> who gets traded first, Donovan Mitchell or Zach Levine? I gotta say Zach Levine because they've been working on it longer. To the LA, right? Yeah, I gotta say the the Lakers are the favorite on that. But um, I'm thinking that I'm, happened, think, either, I'm thinking Mitchell's Lakers gonna go or to Kings. the Heat. I think Mitchell Lakers or Kings. Heat. Lakers or Kings. Wow. Lakers wow. or Kings. And I think we may finally get our Mitchell to the Knicks. I think that might they might finally pull the trigger and bring him there, depending on. You know what it'll cost them. You know OKC has OKC has a ton, a ton of trade capital, like draft picks. That would be interesting. They could. I mean, that's the thing is like Presti did such a good job with the the OKC. I mean, they're number three in the West, um, right? No, they're number two right now. I mean, that's crazy. This is crazy. Like the top three teams in the West are the Timberwolves, the Thunder, and the Nuggets. What 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 century is this? This is wild. (laughs) Mitchell to the Heat would be very interesting to pair with Jimmy Butler. I think that would be very interesting. Yeah. To, to see how that would work. And I mean, I, I'm inter- I'm intrigued by what the Cavs would want back from the Knicks. You know, I'm, I'm draft picks. They're gonna want. I'm gonna want draft picks. Would you? But you'd want like RJ. I would imagine you you would want somebody back, a young player that you can possibly work into your rotation. And I think that RJ would probably make them better. Well, so well. Here's the deal. If I'm if I'm the Cavs, right? I'm a seller. Uh, I'm selling, right? Uh, RJ in my head is peaked, right? Like if I'm the Cavs, he's peaked. I don't. Or are you just taking? Are you going to take Julius Randle back as salary cap and then you just cut him? Or you? Yeah, him yeah, I could do that because I, I I have to rebuild. I need draft picks. There's those guys aren't going to help me be anything they're not gonna help me win a championship they might help me win they might help me make the playoffs but they're not gonna help me win a championship i need championship caliber players you know that's what the problem is with the that's the problem with the Cavs right now it's just like it just it's just not working out they're they're not they're not gelling they're not they should be gelling the way the kings are gelling they should be gelling the way the Thunder you know, are going. The Thunder, well, Thunder, I think they're way ahead of schedule there. I mean, Chet Holmgren's probably going to be the rookie of the year. They are. They are. They are absolutely. And the Magic, the Magic, the Magic are good. Who the? Who, they have nobody in their good. They got Ben Carroll. That's that's the only one I can name. Yeah, the, <laughs> the Pistons, only guy I can name. The Pistons are two and twenty-five. Oh my, twenty-four games. A 24 game bender. That's when you show up to the it's arena and you're like, oh, oh God, we got another game tonight. Shit. <laughs> then, you know, the generational talent that is Victor Wembanyama, the state of the NBA right now, he was supposed to be the difference maker. But it ultimately shows you that, yeah, like, that's not always the case. You yeah. know, like we were concerned about that 19. What competition did he actually play? He's playing play? well, though. I mean, he's playing well. He's, he's yeah, it's the guys around well. him. Like, it's definitely well. the guys around him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But listen, it's it's been it's been two weeks since the Pacers and the Lakers played in the IST, and both teams have struggled since. the The Pacers and Lakers are both one and four since playing in the tournament. In the tournament that did not count. <laughs> Right. And now they are losing games that do count. So should we be blaming the IST, or is this just a bump in the road in the regular season that happens to everybody? You should be blaming people for the fact they don't play fucking defense. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Okay. So let's look at it. One twenty three, one oh nine. Lakers won. Right. Proceed to lose to the Mavericks. Give up one twenty seven. They beat the Spurs, but they gave up one nineteen. Lost to the Spurs, gave up 129. Lost to the Knicks, gave up 114. Look at the Pacers. Okay. Beat the Pistons, gave up 123 points to the Pistons. <sighs> to the Pistons. I'm sure the Lehman Lightning varsity, <laughs> varsity basketball team can hang 150 on the goddamn Pistons. <laughs> so, come on now. Like, this is ridiculous. You, lost, you gave up 140. Uh, the Bucks, you, you, they hung up 140. The Wizards hung up 123. The 
T Wolves hung up 127, and the Clippers dropped 151. Need I say more? Mm. Like they don't play defense. They didn't play defense before the IST. <laughs> and that and that tournament specifically wanted you to run up the score. Yeah. So it play, it played into your worst instincts. And now how do you turn it off? Like that's my question to you. How do you turn it off and say, oh fuck, we should play defense now? Like we, we should probably try. I mean defense is about effort. So hey, we probably should do that. But I think, I think it's kind of funny that they hung a banner for winning the IST. And then lost to the Knicks. Yeah. It. It's, it's kind of like I don't know. Is it one of those banners where you just think you'll just keep putting like years on it? You're not going to get a banner every time you win, right? I mean, that'd be kind of silly. It's a tournament. Like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is significantly smaller than the championship one, so I will give them credit for that. Like, yeah. you, you, you get negative cool points because you hung a banner, but at least it is smaller <laughs> than a championship banner. You know, it is. It's a recognition that this isn't the whole fucking thing. But, I mean, there is something to be said about getting the emotional high of the IST and then the come down, and now these are just regular season games. But ultimately, the, the tournament that did not really do anything for anybody and it didn't really count for anything. But this really exposes both teams as defensive liabilities, and you have to call into question, regardless of how, how high they go up, right? If they make it to the playoffs, you're likely looking at a one and done because this is not sustainable. <laughs> you can't, you can't, this is very Phoenix Suns. Who, wait, wait, who is one? You think the Lakers are going to be one and done if they make it to the playoffs? At this rate, mm. you cannot, you cannot survive giving, averaging, okay. giving up 120 points. Okay, yeah, I can see what you're. I can see what you're saying there. Yeah, like that. That's just not sustainable. And, and right now they would. Well, what the eight the eight seed has to play in the play-in tournament. But mm-hmm. if they did make it, they'd wind up playing like the Wolves, the Timberwolves in the first round. Timberwolves only have five losses. That's insane. They're twenty-five. Right. Wow. Now again, we we've seen the best of the Timberwolves. We've seen the worst of the Timberwolves. The, all be, last year, we saw the worst of the Timberwolves. So <laughs> it's very, it's within their own possibility that they can shit the bed. Absolutely. They're still a relatively young team. But you think that, you know, they would get, they would run the Lakers out of the gym, which is why the Zach Levine thing makes sense. But they, they would, they need help. The, 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 the uh, Lakers would definitely need help. But the Pacers... They're very young, very inexperienced, and it's yeah. I don't know how just... I you know I don't know how much Zach Levine really helps the Lakers. I feel like the Lakers need shooters, right? Don't they need they need someone that sits in the corner that LeBron can kick to or that LeBron, like Anthony Davis can kick to? I mean, you know who isn't... they need, right? Well, they need Clay. They need to start Redman. That's why he's one six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Clay, yeah, Clay, yeah, Clay would be perfect. I, I, you know, Clay just isn't. You know, it's sad because I mean I love Clay, but Clay isn't what he was. You know who's playing well? The Clippers are playing very well. You know, another team not playing well is the Suns. What's going on with the Suns, man? What is up with that? Well, they're fourteen karma? and thirteen. Like what, karma? Devin Booker, yeah. Kevin Durant, you guys can't, you guys can't get it together. Wait, wait, Bradley Beal, Shocker can't get it. He doesn't play, you know. He ain't playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I mean, what did you expect here? <laughs> like, you got rid of Chris Paul, you got rid of DeAndre Ayton, you tied your wagon to Kevin Durant, you brought in injury-prone Bradley Beal, and you thought this would somehow work? Like, no, that, that's a that's that's on Matt Ishbia. That's on the Suns. And, and we got to imagine the Grizzlies are going to surge, right? I mean, he looked fantastic last night with Ja. I mean, he really, he really took over that game. So I've got to imagine that they're going to climb. Rockets are surprisingly good. Like, you Don't know, count out the Pelicans. Eh, I feel like... I feel like Zion's gonna get hurt, right? I mean, oh, inevitably, yeah. It's sad to say that, but I mean, the Pelicans definitely have 
like scorers. They definitely have talent. Um, you know, Ingram is sensational, and McCollum was a huge pickup. Uh, I just don't. I don't. I don't know. Like I don't know. I don't. I'm not afraid of them. You know, I'm not afraid of them. What concerns me, who concerns me, I should say, is the Warriors. If they decide to make some moves, what could they possibly bring back? Are they are they capable of retooling on the fly and making a run at this play-in tournament? Like, what can they get for some of their assets? Because, I mean, Draymond is suspended indefinitely. Yeah. So we don't know what that's going to do. But you got Chris Paul, you have Clay Thompson. They would never trade Steph Curry, like right? They would never yeah. trade Steph Curry. No. But you have some other you have some other assets that you can move. Now, if you can re-energize this team, maybe who's to say that you can't make a run at this? But you're absolutely right. You're looking at the Lakers are right in the middle of it. But any of these guys, any you know, you're either in the seven or the eight. So you're either drawing the Thunder or the Timberwolves. So the Thunder, maybe maybe you clip them, right? Because they are young. Not not I, not with SGA, man. Nah, he ain't gonna let it happen. Like he's that good. Like he's really that good. Um, you know, Timberwolves, I don't really believe in. I I think Anthony Edwards is legit. I just, you know, they're the Timberwolves. I can't I can't see past the name. And the Nuggets are defending champions, and I still haven't seen someone who can really stop Jokic. And they can, they know that, you know, they know that once you're in the playoffs, it's a seven game series. Who's going to beat the Nuggets in the seven game series? You think the Timberwolves could beat the Nuggets in the seven game series? The oh. Clippers, they draw the Clippers in the first round. They can give them a run for their money. Clippers could definitely give them a run for their money if they're healthy. Yeah. If they're like healthy. Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Leonard is playing like the old Kawhi Leonard, not the old, not, a, not an old Kawhi Leonard. He is. So that's huge. He is. He definitely is. And I think they're still, they think they're still trying to find themselves. They're on to something. They've won each street. I think they're on to something. I think Tyru. James, Har- James Harden lost the fat suit. <laughs> James. I forgot James is there. <laughs> that's that, probably a good thing then. I guess. Like, that means he's fitting in. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he has his moments. I mean, whatever, but... Need some last-minute fantasy football advice? Then the boys at the Fade Route have you covered. Tune in every NFL Sunday to Red Light, Green Light, 1, 2, 3 with DNZ. DNI give you our top 1, 2, 3 fantasy starts or Green Light and Fantasy Sits or Red Light. That's Red Light, Green Light, 1, 2, 3 every NFL Sunday during the season. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get the fade route. That's Red Light, Green Light, 1, 2, 3 with DNZ. Every NFL Sunday during the season. You know, moving off of the hardwood into baseball. Most of the high-priced free agents have picked their teams for 2024, but there is still one big fish out there. Mr. Clay Bellinger, uh, he's looking for a contract over $200 million. Will Mr. Bellinger get his contract, and who should consider signing him? It's a good one. It's a good question. It's definitely a good question. Now it, con- it concerns me. It definitely concerns me. <laughs> Will the real Cody Bellinger re- please stand up? Are you the guy? But who? Yeah, that- but who is that? Right, that, that's the that's what I'm trying to say. Is it the guy from 27, 2017 to 2019? Is it the guy from 2023? Or is it the guy from 2021 and 22? Right, I, I don't know that. Now, maybe 2020 you throw out, right? right? It, it's the COVID year. Right? He hit 12 home runs. He played 56 out of 60 games. It was only a 60-game season. So, like, maybe you kind of discount that. Okay. He played 95 games the next year and only hit 10 homers. And then he played 144 games the year after that and only hit 19. So before that, before those three seasons, he was at 47, 25, hit 39 in his rookie year. And then last year he hit 26. So who is this guy? Sounds like a Met already. No. 
No, absolutely not. I, I don't think he comes to the Mets. I, at this point, he's not going to the Yankees, right? Like, it was, like, all set in stone. Like, oh, Cody Bellinger to the Yankees. And then they went and get Alex Verdugo and Juan Soto. Now they got their lefty power back. They don't need him anymore. No, no, no. Yeah, 100. He's not definitely not going to the Yankees. No, he's definitely not a Yankee. I mean, the Mets could use him. I don't know if they're willing to stomach two hundred million dollars. I, I don't think that's going to be the case. Now, <laughs> he, he would provide versatility because he'll play left field, and then he can also spell Pete Alonso at first base, so P can DH. I like him that at would first be nice. base too. Yeah, he's a solid player. He's a solid player. What scares me is those three years, those three lost years in the middle. Now, mm-hmm. the Blue Jays could use him. Absolutely, the Blue Jays can use him. The Angels can use him. The Angels will probably go after anybody for the Pulse. Now, the Cubs can re-sign him. I don't see why he wouldn't want to stay in Chicago. He had a really good season, a good makeup season with the with the Cubbies. You know? He fooled them uh, already, though. <laughs> if there's a comfort level there and he's just entering the prime of his career, maybe, you know, maybe he has caught on to something. Um, yeah, other than that, like I, the Red Sox don't need him. Uh, the See, Red I like I, I I I like him for Boston. I don't think he would go to. I don't think the Boston Red Sox would look for him because I don't I don't think that's the direction they're going. In. They should. I mean, the Orioles would be interesting. That lefty bat in Camden Yards, I think, would be really. How good. about Cleveland? Mm, Cle- I mean, Cleveland can use a veteran. How about the South Side? The South Side too. Yeah, they're rebuilding though. The South Side, the the White Sox. Like, I, if I'm going there and I'm Cody Bellinger, I'm going there to get traded. Yeah, like, I'm literally going sure. there to get traded. So, how about you know, Minnesota? Eh? Mm, they'll play with Correa. Correa in that ballpark. That's they a won big the, ballpark. They won the division, man. They're, they're people they, sleeping on the Twins the last two years. They're, they've they been, did. They've been ballers. How about a reunion with the Dodgers? Nah. They need an outfielder. They need outfielders. Yeah. I, I, I could go. I uh, you that. or me could go play the outfield for them right now. They don't really don't. They don't need Clay Bellinger, man. Uh, yeah, it well, doesn't I matter mean, who's playing fucking outfield over there. Just of the te- <laughs> yeah, of the teams that I listed, like I gotta say, the Blue Jays are probably going to be the most likely. But would it surprise me if he went to the Mets? No. About the but the Reds? I, I, Reds won't pay him. Reds ain't going to pay him. Eh, small market, but that ballpark, he hit 50 homers. They're not going to pay him, though. Colorado, yeah. go play with Chris Bryant or, or don't play with Chris Bryant. <laughs> yeah, right. Chris Bryant would have to play in order for that to happen. But, uh, yeah, of, of the teams that were listed that were in contention, like, I got to think that – I got to think that the, the Blue Jays have a legitimate chance – the Mets, it, I mean, it's a, it's an okay fit. And then third, I would say, is a reunion with the Cubs. Like, I, I mean, the Cubs aren't that far out. They aren't far removed from that division. I think they can possibly win that thing because the Cardinals were not great last year, as we saw, right? The Pirates are rebuilding. The Brewers, mm, they're probably going to start tearing it down. The, the Cubs can take a stranglehold of this division pretty soon with just a few minor tweaks to their team. So Blue Jays, Cubs, Mets on the periphery, I would say. Those are my three teams. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like I said, my difference with you is I I like Boston because of the outfield. I mean, he'll, he's going to hit 60 bombs, 50, 50, 60 bombs. I think he's capable of that there if he's healthy. Um, I think Minnesota's a good idea. You know, they, they were looking for a guy. You know, cl- team him up with Correa. It's a big ballpark, but whatever. Cleveland, Cleveland, I don't know if they want to pay him. Cleveland's nice. South side, I know they're rebuilding, but you need some, you need, you need at least one player to come to see and he can go showcase again because that's what's going to happen. He's not going to get his contract. He's going to have to go somewhere. He's going to have to prove it. That's just what it is. It's what Correa had to do, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then what about you, San Francisco to go with Lee? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah, I could get on board with that too. I mean, 
we're gonna see where he lands, but it's definitely a question mark, right? Like, who is this guy? <laughs> like, I've never been more unsure, and I think the fact that he's still on the on the market, other other GMs aren't sure either, and I don't think that they're willing to take the gamble on this because he had such a prolonged. Time in the wilderness, and <laughs> a prolonged yeah. time yeah. in the wilderness. Yeah, three seasons worth of doldrums is not good. You know, like it, maybe he found something, maybe he didn't. But you know, I think he's probably on another prove it. I wouldn't put. I wouldn't give him two hundred million dollars. No, I absolutely wouldn't give him no. two hundred million dollars. But you know. If you could possibly, with incentives, like maybe if he's willing to do work that kind of deal, okay, fine. Like maybe, maybe like a five one fifty with some incentive kickers that could possibly get you up to two hundred. Yeah, okay, now you're starting to now now I'm starting to, to warm up a little bit. I'm starting to, to sweeten a little bit, but no, like one year does not erase the previous three. Are you in need of air care maintenance or service? I have the company for you. Air Care Technicians. They service the Westchester and Northern Bronx area and can help you with all your heating and cooling maintenance and service needs. Just give them a call at 914-315-1547. Again, that's 914-315-1547. Or shoot them an email at aircaretechnicians at gmail.com. These guys are the real deal as they are veteran owned, licensed, and insured. Make sure to tell them that DNZ sent you. The tradition of Festivus begins with the airing of grievances. I got a lot of problems with you people. Now, you're going to hear about it. As you know, it is Festivus. So, get out of the Schwitz, get your meatloaf, your mashed potatoes, get your peas, write out that check to the human fund, because <laughs> it is time for Festivus, particularly the airing of grievances. We got a lot of problems, and now you're going to hear about it. So, what problems do you have, D? Oh, man. Z, I got five. I got five. Mm. Me First up. off, I'm going to start off with Carlos Rodon. Inks a nice, fat contract with the Yankees. Gets hurt. Comes back to finish the season with a 3-8 and eight record. 6-8-5 ERA in 14 starts. And flips off a fan on a West Coast trip. Thanks, Carlos. <laughs> I've, I've got a bone to pick with you. Number two, Robert Sala. Gosh, last season you wanted anyone but Zach to start. You're a defensive guy, but you claim you're only a quarterback away. You land Aaron Rodgers. You think you're going to the Super Bowl. Aaron gets hurt. Back to Zach. Then you bench Zach. Now Zach's back again. And then it's, I don't make these decisions. I don't know who does. It's like, dude, you're just the middle of the road defensive coordinator. Nothing more, nothing less. Got a bone to pick with you, Coach Sala. Number three, your buddy, Joe Douglas. <laughs> Drafted Sauce Gardner. Great. Drafted Garrett Wilson. Awesome. Have missed on every other pick since then. <laughs> Makai Becton can't stay healthy. Then you sign Alan Lazard, who's a healthy scratch every week. Then you <laughs> then you sign Randall Cobb, who does who's another healthy scratch, doesn't play. But you have you have a way to make your way down from the press box to give a chest bump to Robert Sala after beating an Eagles team that just lost to the Seattle Seahawks on Monday night. Yeah, I've got a bone to pick with you too, Mr. Douglas. Number four, John Morant. 
Mm-hmm. I'm a Rant, up and coming player in the NBA, stellar athlete, stellar basketball player, good person, brandishing firearms on social media on multiple occasions, even though the commissioner told you to stop and you promised you wouldn't do it anymore. Led to a 25 game suspension where your team went 9 and 9 and 16 without you. Gotta be better, Ja. Gotta be better. And last but not least. Your buddy, Brandon Staley, mm. Eckler, Herbert, Palmer, Allen, and you can't win football games. Last playoffs, you're up 27 to 7 against the Jags, and you find a way to lose 30 to 31. This year, you let the Raiders hang 62 on you after they only scored three points the week before. Then, when reporters ask you about your scheme, if you're going to give up play calling duties, you have the nerve to be snarky with them and think they're at, they're in the wrong. Brandon Staley, I've got a bone to pick with you too. Those are my grievances, and they're all legitimate grievances, absolutely legitimate grievances. I am going to start with Aaron Rodgers. He got pissy with the Packers because they drafted Jordan Love. This one's a long, oh, this one's a long term. This is a slow burn grievance. <laughs> so, for the king of petty, the king of petty, Aaron Rodgers. They start a beef with your former organization because they drafted Jordan Love because they need, you know, they, they want to move on with their franchise and have moved on with their franchise the same way that they moved on with you when they drafted you you've now gone full circle and become that old man you've become that Brett Favre character in the story right down to the point where you're requesting a trade and end up being getting traded to the same team in the story arc you get you get traded to the exact same team, and there's the darkness retreat, and then there's hard knocks, and then there's the ayahuasca, and then there's four snaps in the regular season, and then there are the missives on. The Pat McAfee show with your press secretary, Mr. McAfee, about how you're attacking rehab. <clears throat> and you've been you've been rehabbing like you've never rehabbed before. Oh, this Christmas Eve deadline. That I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play. And did did you know did you find did you see what happened? What? He's not gonna play. <laughs> oh yeah. He's not gonna play. Yeah. But he's gonna practice. He's gonna he's practice gonna pra- though. He's gonna practice. So he's important gonna... for him to practice with them. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna fuck. I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna play at all. So you just strung everybody along. And for what? Absolutely for what? So Aaron Rodgers, I got a major deal with you. I got a major problem with you. Do not do that with your with the fans. You don't string them along when you absolutely have no intention of coming back. Come on now. You're better than that. I'm sticking with the NFL. NFL reps. Can you please tell me what a catch is? Can you tell me what a legal hit is? Can you tell me what roughing the passer is? Can you tell me what a football move is? I'm just asking legitimately because I have no fucking clue. You have players getting rocked and no unnecessary roughness, no roughing the passer. But then you have players getting lightly shoved and they're throwing the flags. I'm flabbergasted by this. 
I'm I'm confused. I'm confused by all of it. Now, you got some explaining to do. You got to tell us what the hell the rules are, because it's getting murkier and murkier by the second. So, NFL refs, I have a major problem with you. Fans in general. Yeah, I'm, I'm going there. Especially fans on social media. Stop acting as if players owe you anything. Just because they play for your team. Right? Or you drafted them in fantasy. It means nothing to the player that you drafted them in fantasy. It has no bearing on their life. They have a job to do. And you going and trashing them on social media because they did not play well does you a disservice and really has no bearing on what they do. And all you're going to end up doing is further alienating players and driving a wedge between fans and players. Not to mention, when things really start going south, then you have the general, the, the general bigots and ne'er do wells, who are just looking for a reason to start some shit. So, fans, you know how to act. Do better. Be better. Kelsey brothers. Yeah, I said it. The Kelsey brothers. Focus on football. I don't need to see you in the ads. I don't need to know about your podcast. I, I feel like they're kind of losing their focus on what makes them click and what makes them go. And that's their football. It's starting to slip on the field. Jason Kelsey all of a sudden is getting called for fouls that he doesn't normally get, right? False starts. How do you, false starts on the center. Like, how do you do that? Like, I'm sorry. Like, that's, that's ridiculous. That's a lack of concentration. That's a lack of concentration. And Travis Kelsey, between the drops and the fumbles, this has not been one of his better seasons. So maybe it's a little too much exposure. So, it might be time to just dial it back a notch, gentlemen. And rededicate yourselves. Maybe that's who Jalen Hurts is talking about. Not just not just Jason Kelsey, but also Travis. Maybe he's just tired of seeing the Kelsey brothers in general. Hmm. That's interesting. That's very interesting. And then the last major grievance I have. NCAA. You set up all of the hurdles for Florida State. They jumped over every single one of those hurdles. And then, as soon as they're about to get to the finish line, you pull out a tripwire and you drop them right before they're about to cross it. (laughs) We know you're undefeated. We understand that you did everything that we asked of you and that you should be eligible for the college football playoff. But no, we're going to put in Alabama because, you know, it's Alabama. Never mind the fact that you're more deserving. Like it says in Tombstone, deserves got nothing to do with it. Deserves has everything to do with it. Florida State should be in the college football playoff 
and they got jobbed out in the boardroom, not on the field where it should be. They got jobbed out in the boardroom. So I have a major problem. I have a major problem with the NCAA. So now our grievances are said. What are yours? Hit us up, faderoutemail at gmail.com. Slide in our DMs on IG at Fade Route Podcast. Drop us a line on X at Fade Route DNZ. And get ready for the Festivus Feats of Strength because it's not over until you pin your fall. podcast has its own merch line now go to the fade store with dnz.com today for all your fade route merch needs i'm talking tank tops t-shirts sweatshirts like yoga pants we got those too like some cool accessories we got those too and we're not done yet we have so much more planned for you but check out what we have today at the fade store with dnz.com that's the fade store with dnz.com The Fade Store presents the Alleged Superstar of the Week Award. All right, boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's time for the Alleged Superstar of the Week. You know how it goes. You put up a poll on our X account at FadeRouteDNZ and you vote. And you vote and you vote and you vote. And the winner of said vote gets a shout out on this here show and takes home the coveted ass trophy and do you know who took home the coveted ass trophy last week Dave? i don't the chiefs how about them chiefs bitching to the media after the Kadarius tony brain fart that was last week this is this week who are your nominees d first up i've got jonathan majors Hmm, Kang the Conqueror was found guilty of reckless assault and harassment. Yale graduate and the star of Creed 3, Ant-Man and the Wasp, was quickly dropped by Marvel and now has his A-list actor status in jeopardy. Do better, man. Just do better. Our buddy Sean Stiletto. No, doing, <laughs> Along Sean? with ducking my phone calls, the agent for Tommy DeVito booked an appearance at a pizzeria for 10k and then jacked up the price to 20k causing the owner of the pizzeria to have to cancel good news is tommy hired a new marketing firm to handle all his appearances and sean still gets to handle the football stuff but tommy showed up to the pizzeria as a measure of good faith and sean stiletto looks like a goon Sean Stiletto, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Good on you, Tommy, for honoring your commitment. That's and right. I hope, you, and, I hope you learned how to make a good Italian soda. And then thir- number three, I've got George Pickens. Mm. As Jalen Warren was making his way to the end zone, George Pickens stopped engaging with Jalen Jones, his defender, because he was worried about sustaining a season-ending injury. Z, does that sound like a Pittsburgh Steeler to you? George Pickens, no. you are my alleged superstar of the week. Z, what do you got? Sounds like a Tampa Bay Buck. Sounds like a Jet. Sound Actually, it could be a Pittsburgh Steeler for that Pittsburgh Steeler with Antonio Brown. So, hmm, interesting. I got to start with Richard Mendenhall. Oh, my God, has X been on fire with his comments regarding football commentary somehow leading to an all black player versus all white player draft and dividing the league on racial lines and you did have some people that were were having some fun with it like JJ Watt and I think Dan Orlovsky but no, then you had some other people that, you know, no, right, no. 
you know, well, it's like, you know, like we're gonna have some people had some fun with it, other people called it racist. So that that, that caused quite the Twitter shitstorm, the twit storm, if you will. And it just seemed to further the divide between not only fans and players, but you know, also the ever-growing, ever-present racial divide in sports and the ever-growing, ever-present racial divide in our country. So, thanks, Richard. Merry Christmas to you, too. Richard Mendenhall, you were my alleged superstar of the week. Oh, and they dragged him, too. Let's not forget that Clay Matthews forced a fumble of one Mr. Mendenhall that ultimately cost the Steelers the Super Bowl. So, there, there's that well so good on you Rashad number two Jamal Adams find out you're a healthy scratch and fuck it I'm just gonna go home so way to be a stand up teammate Jamal (laughs) way to be way to be there for your brothers right football's a brotherhood you like to talk about brothers and these are my brothers in arms and we're in the huddle we're in the trenches but oh no we're gonna start julian love instead i'm going home jamal adams you are my alleged superstar of the week and then last but not least very pittsburgh heavy i'm going with pittsburgh steelers Maybe it wasn't Matt Canada's fault. I can't believe I'm saying that. But they can't they couldn't do shit with Canada as their OC. They can't do shit with Kenny Pickett. They can't do shit with Mitch Trubisky. And now they're moving on to Mason Rudolph. They're going back to Mason Rudolph. Is Duck Hodges not available? <laughs> right. So thankfully they're playing the Bengals, because if they were playing the Browns. Miles Garrett would have to be like restrained. So there needs to be a major overhaul in the Steel City. Pittsburgh Steelers, you are my alleged superstar of the week. I think we've said our piece. Go to our X account at Fade Route DNZ and vote and vote and vote and vote and for our nominee. Just do better, boys. Just do better. This has been the Fade Route with DNZ. Thanks for tuning in. Catch our podcast on Wednesday nights on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. So until next time, stay faded, everyone. Time for us to run the go route. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Rate us five stars. Leave us a review. Turn on subscription notifications and tell your friends. Spread the word. Spread it wide.